Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a deadly duo in love with those reacting to some death battle. It's time for a death battle. Yeah. And so we're checking out uh, death battle Pokemon Battle Royale death battle today. And uh, later today, uh, after this, you can check out our Detective Pikachu Yay. movie reaction. Uh, so checking that out for the first time. And we don't know like, really anything about Pokemon. So uh, yeah, this is going to be uh, a good education for us. Yeah, definitely. And uh, real quickly, Beth is going to explain how we do death battle on this channel. So the way this works is we watch the first half of the death battle video where they talk about the characters, their armors, their special skills, their weapons, advantages, disadvantages. Then we pause, we place our bets, and then we watch the second half of the video to see which one of us actually wins. For nearly two decades, people across the globe have struggled endlessly to make one crucial, exhausting, impossible choice. Bulbasaur, Squirtle, or Charmander. Squirtle. Uh, finally time Squirtle. Learn, the one you chose was really the strongest. And what better way than with their evolved forms? Venusaur, the pimply plant monster. Blastoise, the bazooka turtle. And Charizard, the dragon. For a fair assessment, we're examining maxed out wild Pokemon. For those of you nerdy enough to care, this means no special EV training, no mega evolutions, and no tutor bred or means nothing to me. I have no idea what this is. This way, we'll avoid any and all player influence. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. This is gonna be interesting. None of us could win because there's three choices. Yeah. The first starter Pokemon evolves from Bulbasaur it's to the target Ivysaur ones. and yeah. finally to Venusaur, the Ooh. seed Pokemon. <laughs> Becoming uglier and uglier with every form. Seriously, what the hell is that thing? <laughs> of the three starters, Venusaur is the most well-rounded and easiest to raise. In combat, it relies on its above average special attack and special defense or non-physical combat. Old Froggy Plant has a variety of moves. Vine whips for slapping bitches and razor <laughs> can cut through whole trees. Ooh. Then there's the less action-packed skills like sleep powder, which is used to put foes to sleep and huh. take women home from bars. Oh. The is its greatest asset. It can absorb health with leech seed like some kind of jungle vampire or simply heal on its own by using synthesis. It also knows sweet scent, which aids the poor accuracy of the sleep and poison powders. But why bother with poisons and powders when you've got a super laser? Venusaur can absorb so much sun energy that he can fire the solar beam. Venusaur. When I find flowers that can do that, I might actually take up gardening. Try and pollinate now, bees. In real life, celestially powered lasers rely on heated magnesium combustion. In order to fire, the solar beam's temperature needs to be over 6,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Damn. Unfortunately, the solar beam is so powerful, it takes twice as long to perform as any other attack. As a grass and poison type, mm. Venusaur is extremely effective against water type Pokemon. But keep him away from flying and fire types, because as we all know, plants burn and birds fucking hate grass. <laughs> Venusaur's well rounded skills and tricky moveset could outsmart the competition. Charizard. Venusaur, the final form of the Bulbasaur evolution. This seed Pokemon soaks up the sun's rays as a source of energy. The second starter Pokemon evolves from Squirtle to Wartortle and finally to Blastoise, the shellfish Pokemon. So how did this thing come about? Did a turtle get really drunk one night and then came across a tank and was like, hey, I'll put my dick in that. <laughs> the tank showed up at his door and was like, boom, this is yours. And then he raised it out of shame until one day it evolved and then all the other turtles were like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. And they all started plowing tanks. Sure, yep. why not? That's exactly how it happened. Blastoise firmly boasts defense over offense, using his weighty bolt to outlast and overpower foes. Like a stone firm upon the shore, he can hmm. take wave after wave of punishment. Hmm. As poetic as that was, he won't be winning any marathons. He's almost as slow as a tortoise, which makes sense, unlike the giant gun sticking out of his back. <laughs> Blastoise can significantly reduce incoming damage with iron defense, barrel through hazards with rapid spin, and guard against any and all attacks with protect. He can jump foes with bite and crack heads with skull bash, but most of his arsenal focuses on water power, blasting foes with water gun, water pulse, aqua tail, and bubbles. 
but despite its lack in attack type diversity, Blastoise can maximize its watery weaponry with Rain Dance, a rainstorm that amplifies water type moves and blocks out the sun. But his <laughs> ultimate attack is Ooh, Hydro out the sun. Bump, where he blasts water out of his twin cannons with enough force to accurately punch through steel at a range of 160 feet. High pressure water jet cutters are used industrially to cut through metal with at least 55,000 psi wow. or pounds per square inch. I didn't By measuring his cannons in comparison to his size, we can tell his hydro pump has a power of 90,000 psi. <laughs> That'll get the stains off your patio, <laughs> along with your patio and possibly house. Blastoise is effective against fire type Pokemon, but weak to grass and electric. And when he's not battling, Blastoise can be found training on secluded islands to strengthen his combat skills. If it plays its defenses right, Blastoise just might outlast everyone. Blastoise's strength lies in its power rather than its speed. Its shell is like armor, and attacks from the hydro cannon on its back are virtually unstoppable. Yeah. The final starter Pokemon evolves from Charmander to Charmeleon, and finally Charmeleon. to Charizard, the flame Pokemon. I would so ride that into battle. Well, that could be tough. A full-grown Charizard is only five foot seven inches tall. What? That's <laughs> bullshit. I want to ride a dragon to burn the villages of my enemies, not hang out with it on the sofa. Despite its Warrior size, Charizard is extremely fast and extremely powerful. Its speed and special attack eclipse the other two starters twice over, the trade-off being unfortunate frailty. But since he can fly, it's pretty hard to get a hold of him. Charizard's moveset is incredibly diverse, ranging from the obvious fire breath to flying, dragon, and even ghost-type attacks. At close range, he'll always have an edge up by using either Slash, Dragon Claw, or Shadow Claw. He can strike from above with Wing Attack or Air Slash, but his real strength lies in the flames. He'll burn and bite you with Fire Fang, trap you in a vortex of embers with Fire Spin, smash you apart with Flare Blitz, at the cost of self-inflicted recoil damage, and of course burn you to cinders with Flame Burst or Flamethrower. Charizard can reportedly burn through solid stone. This means his Flamethrower reaches temperatures over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Charizards are aggressive and warrior-like and will actively seek fights with stronger opponents. <laughs> the type combination makes Charizard doubly effective against grass Pokemon, but weak to water types. If it spends too much time in a heavy rainstorm, its flame will go out. Permanently. <gasps> He's so fast and deadly, he might just overpower his enemies before they know what hit him. Charizard, the flame Pokemon. When competing in intense battles, Charizard's flame becomes more intense as well. Since they had three this time, I felt like they went a lot faster through the, uh, especially Charizard seemed, seemed like he was like real quick, it was over, over like that. I'm not gonna pick Charizard because it seems like he has two weaknesses. Like it seems like the uh, turnip one that we said had like a turnip on his back or whatever, uh, has like the, the sun rays that will hurt fire but it doesn't hurt water. And then Squirtle has, you know, the water, Obviously, um, I'm calling him by his like baby name, not his like his his grown up name because Squirtle's just better. He's a Squirtle. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with Squirtle. I'm gonna go with five dollars on Squirtle. And yes, I am picking it mainly because of the name of Squirtle because <laughs> I want to say it as many times as possible. But yeah, I mean, I think this is gonna be about you know outlasting your opponent. And he's just a tank, and so you got I'm betting on the tank. Five bucks on him. I'm going to see your five on Squirtle. Okay. I'm gonna go ten. On Squirtle? On Squirtle. Okay. I knew I was going to pick Squirtle after the name. Yeah. But he is a tank. They say he can take a beating. His powers work against fire. So yeah. there goes Charmander. The sun's things don't do damage to water. So the turnip guy is is has got a weakness compared to Squirtle as well. So I'm going to bet on Squirtle. I'm going to go 10 to make it more interesting. Okay. And that's that's my vote. The combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time and Squirtle. For we, we've been on a streak of picking the losers. This is, this is gonna be three in a row. This is gonna be three in a row that we picked all, picked the same loser. No, no, Squirtle's got this. Look at him, he's so cute. <laughs> They're all so cute. I know. Oh. There's <laughs> fish, hard candy. I thought I was thinking hard candy too. Oh! 
quit picking on him. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. You can. Yep. Oh, he has a tongue or whatever. Heat against heat. Ooh. It's supposed to be better against fire, though. There's a little something. Turn, guy? What the hell just happened? I don't know what he did. Oh. Ooh. Mm. oh, he took his turn up. Oh, death. Oh. And destruction. Oh, that was just sad. Bye. <laughs> and Squirtle is still asleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, I get allergies too. Mm -hmm. I feel you. Uh oh. You was always gonna come down to them, fire and water. Boom. Prolonged rain. Ah. Ooh. Hang up fire. Oh, oh, lighting oh. the head. Lighting ah. the head. Off his wings? Ooh. Oh. Oh, this isn't looking oh, good. Oh. Good. <laughs> oh, he's turning him into a water balloon. <laughs> oh, damn. Turtle wins. Does he, though? I feel like that's too easy. <laughs> Charizard's greater speed allowed first attack, and its proud warrior mentality led to striking Blastoise first. But Venusaur knew he had to take Charizard down right away, so everyone's favorite fire lizard was doomed, taking <laughs> too much damage early on from two different angles. But poor Venusaur didn't stand a chance against Charizard's dual typing. Yeah. The bulky defense of Blastoise was more than enough to outlast both of them. Also, since Charizard and Venusaur do not naturally learn Sunny Day, they could not counter the rain dance. But Wizard, shouldn't they all just counter each other? <laughs> Inevitable uh, YouTube comment. The paper scissors factor is a bit tricky. Grass beats water, water beats fire, fire beats grass. But ultimately, the core of any Pokemon battle boils down to mathematics. Every attack does a specific amount of damage with specific effects to specific types with a specific accuracy. And each Pokemon's stats are clearly displayed in the good old Pokedex. So by comparing every move, effect, choice, order, and likeliness of occurrence, there are over 7,000 different possible ways this battle royale could play out. Ooh, wow. And out of all potential matches, Blastoise wins the majority. Even when removing type effectiveness mm. entirely and pitting attack and special attack against defense and special defense, factoring in health and speed, the turtle tank still takes it. Blastoise H2 owned. The winner is Blastoise. Squirtle! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we finally broke the streak and we finally, uh, you know, got back on the winning streak and uh, both got on there and you, your your faith in Squirtle was, re was repaid. Yeah. I love the fact that they talk about how they have the little like inevitable YouTube comment, but mm -hmm. couldn't it have been this or couldn't they have all canceled themselves out? I love that they talked about the various different outcomes and the math and the fact that percentage wise, Squirtle is the victor the majority of the times, hence justifying their choice in this death battle. And I, they do a great job at coming up with, with not just how like, oh, well, I think so-and-so is the strongest, so I'm gonna go with them, but like really breaking it down into all of the different intricacies of the characters and their special skills and everything else mm -hmm. to really come up with that math. Like you can tell how much time they spend on these things and it's so admirable. It'd be cool if they did that for like every single match is if they like said, you know, 
how many times, and it'd be, I know it's tougher for uh, other uh, death battles because they don't have like necessarily the math that Pokemon does uh, for them to calculate it, uh, how this, how the matches would go. But I mean, they do do a lot of math in, the, in uh, other uh, death battles as well. So it'd been cool if they were been like, yeah, you know, in this amount of uh, scenarios, we had, you know, you know, Batman winning like 78% of the time, and you know, uh, whatever. Uh, Captain America winning like, you know, 25% of the time, whatever. Those don't max up to 100. That's more than it. I realize that. But, <laughs> uh, um, you know, so this wasn't a thought out process. I'm, just, I'm, I'm winging it here, people. Uh, but it's, you know, it'd be cool if they they uh, if they did that, they included that. Because like, I really enjoyed that for, for this one that they did the math and they said like, yeah, it's not that they that this would always be the outcome, but it's like who will win the most amount of time. And I think I forget that sometimes when we do bet. It's like, okay, who's going to win the most amount? Not like who's going to win uh, necessarily like just one once. That's true. I I similarly, I think, have had oftentimes mm -hmm. the wrong approach. I'm looking for like, ooh, what is that like one special thing that is going to yeah. be like the trump card in this scenario? And all of a sudden, that's going to be how they win. Because mm -hmm. if they if all the stars align just right, the card will be available to them and they can go for it. Yeah, exactly. Um, Which is generally not how battles are going to go, that everything's going to go exactly right for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's like a Hollywood theory that's been instilled in us. Like, oh, everything's <laughs> going to line up just right to be the most dramatic or the most yep. interesting or the most heroic. Okay, so with that, uh, I am uh, back up to where we started at. I'm at 250, and then you are at uh, 280. No, sorry. And then you are at 285, because you bet 10, 10 bucks. So there you go. So you can continue to, to build your lead uh, against me. If you want all of our death battle reactions, check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. And then later today, we got Detective Pikachu, the reacting to for the first time. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, something got messed up like during filming and uh, the mic got unplugged. And so our sound isn't the best in this uh, upcoming uh, movie reaction. But we want to make sure, you know, we give you authentic reactions and we didn't want to like you know, refilm it or something like that just because the sound was uh, messed up. So, you know, we want to watch it for the first time and, you know, really, really mean that we watched it for the first time. <laughs> so you'll see a great reaction and you'll sort of hear a great you, reaction. You'll, you'll hear it. You'll hear it. It's just not, it's just not, it's just not clean and crisp. Like, you know, you'll, you'll be able to hear everything. It's just not clean and crisp. Uh, so we do apologize about that. And thanks so much for checking out our reaction for this uh, Pokemon death battle. But just keep in mind that our reaction is definitely not definitive.